Hey, I'm Derek. And I am Noah. And you are... No, that's your part. I stole your part. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And you're listening to a bite of. <laughs> I was too excited. Where we take our current favorite pop culture obsession and enjoy it one nibble at a time. One nibble. I feel like we haven't done this in forever. It... it mm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's our fifth nibble of Percy Jackson. So much Percy Jackson. We've, um, guys, so much. I yeah. hope you're enjoying it because we've been doing nothing but that. And I think in the <laughs> beginning we were like reading the book and we were doing the press and and everything. And now it's kind of like, oh, we're just doing this now. Yeah. We're yeah. just doing the show. It's like just the show. And it was funny. So, um, side note, um, the last episode was our last screener we got. We got four episodes for the screener initially. Fantastic. Thank you, Disney. Thank you, and we Disney. complained on the last episode and we were like, we don't have screeners anymore. We're going to have to watch it and release this later. Like somebody on Twitter was literally like, did I miss your guys's episode? I'm like, no, we just don't have screeners. I'm we're not sorry. cool anymore. <laughs> and then literally this afternoon, Disney was like, oh, here's the screeners for six, seven and eight. I'm like, what? <laughs> Why not five? <laughs> They're like, it's too late for five. We already know it's too late for five. So. <laughs> <laughs> the our episodes are going to go back to when they were we're going to release them the day the episode gets released wednesday um so there you go that's that <laughs> back on our original schedule also thank you disney i'm curious if you're listening so sorry that we complained but also thank you <laughs> maybe we're on maybe someone from disney you know said follow well becky listens to us so you know hi becky hi becky <laughs> hi okay oh Happy this, New Year. <laughs> this episode has a lot. There's a lot to unpack with this one. Um, before we get into that, we had to do housekeeping stuff, right? Yeah. We've gotten some new reviews. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those. We're still on our way to 200. So if you're listening to us on any app where you're allowed to do reviews, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever else, I can't name them all. Just go down there and give us reviews and make sure you're following us. That way you can actually get alerts when we release them how we used to <laughs> on Wednesdays <laughs> but that's really it Patreon you know we're going back to um, covering our before the MCU this month so that's going to be fun mm-hmm. mm. all right so spoiler alert for this episode because things happen in this episode just one or two that are like pretty great so if you don't want us to spoil it for you don't watch it <laughs> But let us officially take a bite of Percy Jackson and the Olympians, Episode 5, A God Buys Us Cheeseburgers, directed by Jet Wilkinson and written by Rick Reardon and Jonathan E. Steinberg. Percy dries off and notices that the authorities are after him. He and his fellow questers get to step in to escape the spotlight. A leather-clad god intercepts the trio and offers them sustenance and a side quest. The tunnel of love becomes a tunnel of terrors leading to Percy becoming the golden boy. Annabeth denounces the way of the gods, impressing the god of craftsmen, leading them back to the leather-clad god, who sends them on their way with animals to another god. <laughs> Bravo. A grazie, a grazie. Also, I really liked um, you calling him the golden boy. <laughs> Was that a little too evil? No. Or just right on the money? It was right on the money. I, I mean... Do- I do, sorry, I do want to um, amend something from the last episode, or not amend, just, I think it's crazy we didn't mention it, right? We watched the fourth episode as a screener. The screener, because it's on the laptop and just the way it is, it's a little darker. Mm -hmm. So the final scene in the last episode where we see the water spirit talking to Percy, we did not realize that it was like a jellyfish thing. (laughs) And in watching it the second time, She reminded me of the very sexy lady fish. From Shark Tale? Yes. I have that in my notes. She had that hair going on. And I said, okay. Yeah, I I like it. I think the interpretation is great. I know in the book it was like, is that my mom? Like, you couldn't really tell because it's disgusting in there. And the trauma. Right. Um, But yeah, so it was a jellyfish thing. I It's cool. I just thought it was weird we didn't mention that because it is so odd. (laughs) Well, you know what? It was murky and blurry and dark, and maybe we weren't supposed to. So I think our eyes were perceiving what they could at the moment. Mm-hmm. So mayhem at the arch. 
Mm -hmm. I love the shots of the camera coming out of the water, showing the arch on fire. Fantastic shots here. We see Annabeth and Grover surrounded by mayhem. Cops are looking at them. People that were in the arch were looking at them. Annabeth sees the fates. Grover sees the authorities. The fates cut the thread, which is not good. Any Greek story you know, fates are involved. If you've seen Hercules, same concept. (laughs) The middle fate. Dead eyes, Annabeth. When her little like, tiny pony. Oh, yeah. She's like, watch this, baby. <laughs> I love the three of them. These three old women with their yarn and their scissors who are sitting like in basically lawn chairs while the arch is on fire. <laughs> like, I'm sure they just appeared, right? Yes. But it's such a funny visual to be like, oh, yeah, this is just old ladies knitting and just watching the commotion. Yeah, you know, they have, they're, they're retired, so this is how they spend their days, just looking for disasters to sit by. <laughs> they have, like, a little uh, police patrol thing that they listen to. Police scanner. Yeah. <laughs> That's the word. Do you think, so Annabeth tells Percy and Grover later on that it's an omen, right? That, you know, cutting the, th- the thread is an omen, that somebody's going to die or something bad's going to happen. Do you think... That we've seen it already, or it is yet to come. Because he gets turned to gold. Yeah. Right? So that would be the thing that I would say, ah, yes, that's when he was dying or died. But when I think about the book, right, they're there and the same thing happens. And this whole golden boy scene does not happen in the book. No. So if we're basing it on the book, the death has not occurred yet. Or, yeah, something. Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what I'm assuming, right? It's, it could, but. I would almost say they're going to have to like not make it known, but like, oh, this is the thing. You know what I mean? Because I feel like with adding that extra thing, could that have been interpreted as that's what they were talking about? Yeah. And, you know, I have to be honest. I don't know enough about the mythology behind the fates where it's something similar to the Oracle, where it's like not necessarily a premonition, but a warning in a way. I mean, I think a lot of times the gods and whatever, they're all in riddles. So it's, it's not like, straightforward. Like the, the fates were just like, ooh, Hades is really mad. Let's go cut some cord, baby. Or they're just like, I just need to. I'm Maybe done they with were this just part. really, yeah. they just finished the sock. And they weren't even fates. They no, were. <laughs> they were just truly three old ladies. And that one old lady knew that, that those kids were bad news. Yeah. So they go and find Percy. But I did want to point out that we finally got, because we had questioned like, okay, are the authorities going to be after them and all that? So this confirms Mm. that the authorities, FBI, everybody's going to be after these three, the mortal world. And we also get to see Smelly Gabe talking about them on the news and him crocodile tears about everything, blaming him for his mother's disappearance. He was more upset about the Camaro. Yeah. Perfect. I love that he has that slip up where he says, I, uh, we really love that car. You know what? And I bet you he was still wearing sweatpants. Oh, even though he had a tie on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could tell that he had not taken that suit out in a while. That was a Zoom call. So yeah. he was still doing the same thing as his online gambling. Yeah, the poker right next to him. <laughs> so when they finally reunite, Annabeth going to Percy and hugging him and they linger on the hug and Percy looks like he's like, oh, this is nice. What does this mean for our friendship? Is this a friendship or more? I personally wanted Grover to get in on the hug. But I wanted the two of them to be like, Percy. No, this is Annabeth and Percy's episode. That's true. So Grover had to break it up because he's like, this is going on a little too long. Yeah. (laughs) He's like, so um, (laughs) they're after us. This is lovely, but we got to go. Yeah. Yeah, I love when they're finally on the road, right? And they're walking. There's plenty of like Percy Beth, Percy and Annabeth moments in this. So like we have a lot to talk about with that. They're on the road, right? And Percy, I feel like the more the episodes go on, the more Percy is very Percy. Mm. He's talking about it and he's like, you know, I don't this quest must be harder than we realize. Like, how deep does this go? And they're like, yeah, like, are you just realizing this yes he's just realizing that <laughs> they have listen they have to be nice to him he's not been a part of this world i said that in the last episode and they need to just leave him alone yeah he's figuring these out at his own speed yeah <laughs> I, I did like that he says to them like we need to like dig deeper we need to be detectives and i feel like in this episode 
they all have like their own little detective moment. Grover takes it to a whole new level. Oh, Grover is going full Dick Tracy gumshoe. <laughs> like, I feel like if he had like a little cigar, he'd be like, yeah, I love the lobster war. Yeah, he was playing the Queen's Gambit with Heck, Ares yeah. the whole time. <laughs> I he was like, it. your move, counter move. He yeah. knew exactly what he was doing. I like that he thought that far ahead, but I think he did take that detective part. Too far. Not too far, but like he was like, okay, this is my chance to shine, guy. I'm playing a role. I'm 24 years old. Let's do this. Uh, we finally got the line <laughs> where he's like, I'm 24. Oh, so good. Also, next episode, he should be driving the car, not a 12 year old. He's, he's taking his young friend out just, for his learner's permit. He's teaching him how to drive. <laughs> so Aries comes onto the scene. I love the part where they're behind the guardrail. Or the cement blocks, whatever they're called. I actually don't know what those things are called. I don't know what they're called either. If you know, let us know. Big old block things. Yeah, but they're not. They're not even blocks. Weird. Yeah, they're cement dividers. That's actually probably Guard, right. It's guardrails? I think you were right the okay. first time. Um, when they finally realize that Aries is Aries and they all peek their heads over. Oh, it's just like a classic kid thing. Yes. It's so good. Uh, so I know that. So <laughs> this is really was a Percy Annabeth. Uh, episode but grover had such great moments in this the grover comedy in this just had me like you know chef's kiss i love when when airy first pulls up and um grover's like um, beg pardon <laughs> and then he goes like so long yeah. <laughs> like we're fine so long he's like crouching back down and he's like no thank you it's so long <laughs> it's so good i love it the comedic timing of them are is so good yeah i did want to mention before we like get into the diner that percy again being himself annabeth is like going through some things right in this episode alone she goes through a lot of growth she's like now finally friends with percy she's starting to question the gods and like how everything interacts and he takes that as oh was this because we hugged like it doesn't have to be a big deal we're friends now that's what friends do percy <laughs> she's like Just percy i have no time for your trivial prepubescent <laughs> nonsense okay i saw the fates threatening us with death uh, and he's like oh yeah okay so it wasn't the hug but maybe it was the hug a little bit you're cute but you're dumb <laughs> like that's all you can say with percy like you're cute but you're dumb just like he's courageous yeah <laughs> we also do find out one adam copeland aka edge fantastic in this episode um looked menacing i'm sad that he doesn't have his long hair anymore um that was his trademark but that's from my wwe days i believe he like started in the 90s yeah we're going back yeah um very good i was more of a stone cold steve austin kind of guy but like edge was fine he was edgy i uh wasn't into the wwf when it was called the wwf oh. before it was called the wwe i liked it when hulk hogan was there uh the undertaker like way way back when oh, i was yeah. younger but then my best friend, Melissa, who was on, when, on the episode when we talked about Midnight Sun, mm -hmm. um, she was a big WWE fan. I could see that. She and, says brother a lot. And she used to do yeah. the suck it yeah. thing a lot. Didn't we all, though? I didn't. I don't believe that. No, I was a lady. Melissa. <laughs> I'm telling you, I used to just watch. <laughs> I would support them. They would go to like the local like fan greeting events for oh, the yeah. wrestlers. I mean... I was, I grew up in the South, so it was, you know, we wrestled in the backyard too. It was, it was a big thing. I was too gentle of a soul. He's great though on this. Yeah, he was fantastic. He, I don't think he's been in anything in a while. This is his like comeback almost. Even though he didn't have the, um, skin motorcycle. Okay. <laughs> that, so one of the changes they did from the book, if you listen to our episodes on that was the description of his bike was that it looked like it had Caucasian skin on it. And I was like, oh, they don't, we're not doing that. Okay, we're not doing that. I do feel like with Aries, they could have, this is like one of my only critiques with this episode is that like the descriptions for him, right? When he's in the diner, he seems to be like be able to command the room and he like makes people angry or whatever. And he has like fire and bombs in his eyes and his he's riding a, a caucasian skinned motorcycle and it's like we didn't really get any of that it didn't have to be like caucasian skin but like something more like i'm the god of war you know 
No, I'm with it you. It almost felt like because we were mortals, we were just seeing what we would have seen. Like there could have been like big exhaust pipes on the back that shot fire out of them or something. Or is that too much? Is that too on the nose? I just liked his trench coat. Yeah. It was very long and it flipped in the wind. <laughs> I do, I love now that um with the with the invention of social media, this is another thing that really gets Aries going. Because when they first get to the diner, he's hysterical laughing. He's like, I'm just starting a fight on Twitter. Him being a Twitter troll is the most Aries thing ever. He must live for it. It must make him so happy. He just probably just pisses everyone off. Doesn't matter who you are, what you're talking about. He will just automatically troll you. Oh, yeah. I love that um, there's like a, a meme or a trend going around. It's been going around for a while where it's like, it has a character and it has like the bubble half of it mm-hmm. and people will quote tweets with that. And now there's one of Aries and people are like putting stuff to have to do with like people calling it Perkabeth instead of Persebeth. And it's like, it's hilarious. Aries is the one that's causing all this drama. Oh yeah. It's, it's see <laughs> when we, sometimes we think too big about war, war can be on Twitter. He's doing it all the time. <laughs> the question is what is Aries handle? Or does he just have a bunch of troll accounts that he just uses? War dude 666. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Bloodshed. <laughs> Skin cycle. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> that, that didn't sound good. I don't like that one. <laughs> Let's cut that one out. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I, we're just spitballing here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when they're in the diner... Um, I love that they found the right one, right? Um, but I love that Annabeth like doesn't give a shit, and she just keeps like jabbing at him the whole time. Even the eyebrow raise that she does, and he's like, "It was cute for a little bit, but like knock it off." And she doesn't. She keeps going. I think that that re- brother sister relationship between Ares and Athena was passed on to Annabeth. She can't help it, and they just look at him as like this guy. <laughs> Here he goes, <laughs> talking big, always. <laughs> so the, I, I love everything that happens in the diner, especially with um, Grover and Aries. But in the short time that all of them are together, we do find out that, um, you know, every, Zeus sent everybody out to go look for the ball. Mm. Aries tells him, oh, you don't think that a war is happening? Zeus is going to go to war with Poseidon. This is what we do. The gods always go to war. Even if there isn't one, he knows that there's one coming. So why not? Which I think is really interesting because it's like, no matter what they do, so this puts like a wrench in their plan, right? Is there going to be war? Doesn't matter what the Oracle said, because even Ares, he could have been trying to start something, but is he right? He's like, is that what Chiron told you? Mm-hmm. What did the Oracle actually say? Like, right. <laughs> you and, know. and, you know, this part of it might just be that he's stirring the pot. But also, I think that what we see here, which I think is a thread throughout the rest of the episode, is breaking the Olympian family cycle, right? And so we see that through the rest of this, especially when they get to the amusement park about how the Olympians treat each other and how they're willing to backstab each other and throw each other away just for their own greatness or just even because it's a Tuesday. And so this is Aries kind of saying and planting that seed for us as the audience saying like, this is what Olympians do. And no matter what, there's just going to be war. Oh, yeah. I mean, that is what they do, right? But it, it, I love this, like, this tension and this conflict of, like, new and old gods, meaning, like, the new one are, are these generation and the old gods, or even just, like, monster versus monster. Like, who is the actual monster in this thing? Is it the gods that we're supposed to worship? Yes. <laughs> right. But, like, I love this whole ideal being um, presented in this way. With also subtle things of like our real world stuff, like because this is happening in Olympus, this is how it affects the real world. Pan is gone. Pollution is running rampant and humans are killing the earth. It's, it's very smart. And I think it's a natural way to tell these stories and make it a little more believable. Mm. I like that a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> Ares says, I'll help you if you retrieve my shield from an amusement park nearby. Sure. He keeps Grover as collateral which is smart, so they don't run off. Got to say, he's a god of war. He knows how to make deals, and he knows when people are being sneaky. So he's very smart with this. I do also want to talk about their food situation for like two seconds. I would love to talk about it. Because there was too much. (laughs) There was burgers on burgers and towers of fries. 
Um, didn't really look like anybody touched anything, but like poor Grover, because in another scene we get, there's like steaks, steaks oh. and a milkshake. I don't even know if he does dairy. Probably not. I don't. I think he's vegan. Maybe. Oh, that's a good question. Will he do? Yeah. Cause it's like, well, I guess the, how they get it right. He probably wouldn't do it from like a diner, but maybe at camp half load, if they make butter or something or like maybe he just does smoothies with almond milk. Oh Yeah. <laughs> wow i'm just okay <laughs> some of us are lactose intolerant you included i am too but i do lactate because <laughs> i can't do those nut milks i can't Mm-mm. watch it um <laughs> don't make me bring up the skin cycle again <laughs> um <laughs> no what i wanted to talk about is how do you order hamburgers so they come in a mountain and not on separate plates you tell them I want all the hamburgers. I want a pile of burgers and a mountain of fries. No, what you heard is all, all of them, but I want every burger you have in the establishment. He Ron swanson it to get all the burgers on one single plate. <laughs> uh, what I see, I think what I'm trying to get at is someone tell me how to go to a diner and order a mountain of French fries, not an order of French fries, a mountain of French fries. I think you have to be the God of War. To like make them do that. You gotta have that pull. I don't have that pull. <laughs> I could order two separate things of fries and just pop them on top of each other. <laughs> so before we get to the amusement park, water world, tunnel of love, and all that, let's talk about Aries and Grover because their scenes kind of happen throughout this episode. And I think we should just sit with it for a little bit because we're already here. We're just gonna put them together. We're already seated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, like we said, Grover's playing chess. Yes. And Grover is ready for this conversation. When Aerie says he wants to keep him as collateral, he's like, yep, cool, let's do this. Bye, guys. Go, 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 go. Uh, So Grover is has formulated this plan very quickly. Yeah, he's he's upping his ego, which he knows that will get his attention. He kind of weaves the saying of like, well, I saw you at the winter solstice. Who could have snuck in and gotten the bolt? Somebody that would stand up to Zeus and doesn't care. Somebody that could be gone and not missed. Who do you think that is? And he also drops a line of like, it doesn't matter who did it. Zeus thinks Percy did it. And that's what matters. And so it kind of gets Ares gears turning here. But I'm not sure if Grover has it figured out. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. does he think that it's Clarice? That like, that's my feeling I got from this. Like, does he think that Clarice was the one that did it? Or... (laughs) I'm not going to spoil it for people that haven't seen it. Do you think he actually knows who did it? I'm thinking he's thinking it's someone like Clarice. 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 Mm -hmm. I think that that's where his mind is going because there's also a part in these scenes where Ares shows what shitty parents the gods are once again by saying, oh, the solstice, I got to sit there and they present the things to me and it's so boring. and so. Maybe in Grover's mind, he's saying, well, what would a child of a God do to try to impress them even more? Mm -hmm. And so maybe that's leading him to someone like Clarice. Yeah. I mean, because he, (laughs) I loved how he talked about kids. I mean, it's shitty. And I think we know that the gods are shitty to their kids, but like, (laughs) he was like, my knees hurt. What are butterflies for? And I'm like, (laughs) what? What are butterflies for? Or maybe he said, like, where are they from? But either way, it just like. <laughs> but it's like kind of funny. It's like if you think my knees hurt, that's like an old person. Right. And then someone asking what are butterflies for? Where are they from? That's like a child. So yeah. he just hates all his children, no matter how old they Which are. also begs the question of like, one, I do think that you're on, like, I think it's on the right track for Grover to think that because it's like Clarice got the spear from Aries. So it's like. How would she be in his favor? That kind of makes sense. Um, But like, I think, I don't know. I think he's wrong. You know, I I think, I personally think. Grover. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I think we have to wait until next episode to see who he really thinks it is. But I mean. Let us know. It's a little, it's a little early. Yeah. Comment below. See, um, what do you think? Do you think he's wrong? Do you think he's right? Who knows? Will Grover say, I know who it is. And they go, who? He goes, I'm not going to tell you. Yet. <laughs> also him saying Athena with her as owl best friend. So good. Um, I love the lighting in the situation. Um, there was a moment when he finally puts down the phone and is more invested in the conversation. 
and the light is kind of shining above him. Mm. So it, it makes his face just kind of how his face is, but like it makes it a lot more menacing with mm-hmm. the light being directly going down. So good. Do you think that Ares knows the game that Grover's playing right now? I don't think he does mm. because he even talked about satyrs being like hippies and protesters and like you sing about whatever. I don't think he takes them seriously. Mm. So I think it's perfect for Grover to be like, I got him. Yeah. Or at least to ask him questions. And he kind of played into his hand because there was a moment where I was like, Aries might know what he's doing, but he didn't. He didn't. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. He did. He definitely let Grover, you know, fill him with hot air. Yeah. There was a there was a moment where he's really riling him out. And the music was just getting like chaotic. And I was like, ooh, cool. Mm-hmm, <laughs> I mm-hmm. like this. Okay. So on to Waterworld. Because I think that's really the majority of their conversations. Waterworld. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful Waterworld. Haunting. <laughs> well, listen. The, <laughs> Haunting. Percy's like, wow, this place is great. It looks like, uh, you know, a amusement park in a movie. I just want to say this place is run down. It's scary. It's terrible. Tet- no, no, no. Annabeth liked it percy didn't like it because he said he said this looks like the place in horror movies like i'm not supposed to be here yeah and then that's when we get the devastating line of annabeth never have seen a movie she was seven when she left home she didn't see any movies are you kidding me what kind of parents (laughs) well we know we know (laughs) if you could introduce annabeth to her first movie what would it be i'd have to go disney I mean, you don't have to, but probably. You got to go Disney. Yeah. You know? But what Disney movie? Uh, I don't know. I'm asking. Oh, gosh. I mean, you think she'd want to see Hercules? No, she knows about all that stuff. And she'd probably be spotting all the inaccuracies. You know what I think? Tell me. Big Hero 6. Yeah. Right? Machines. Right? Scientists. Superhero kids. Devastating. Yeah, she's used to that. <laughs> she probably won't be moved. <laughs> no. Or like an architectural documentary. She might like that, too. I don't know any. But this like, is how the Empire State Building was built. Yeah, but those are my guesses, at least for, for her. Let us know. On Spotify, that will be our question for this episode. What movie would you introduce Annabeth to for the first time? Yeah, it does not have to be Disney. She's a 12. She's 12. Yeah, because I guess I was thinking if she were younger, but 12-year-olds like Disney movies. We like Disney movies. I like movies. Disney movies. <laughs> We're literally pretty much talking about a Disney I'm movie. Just don't, I just kind of want to end the episode and really just think about what movie. Uh, I need to really think about it. Yeah. <laughs> Ghosted on it. <laughs> we did an episode on that and I'm still not happy about it. No, we I, never will be. No, <laughs> we never will be. Also, our letterboxed rap, because like we forgot to log something. It showed that as the first movie for us in 2023. And I was like, for fuck's sake. I can't get away from Ghosted. <laughs> it's our number one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, Annabeth not seeing a movie. They go through the turnstiles. And I love this scene because Percy is like scared he's about to die. And Annabeth is just admiring the craftsmanship of this. It's so good. There's so much that happens in this episode where it's like these are the like the base level of these characters. Like this is the thing that you can always assume that they're going to do. Annabeth is going to appreciate the craftsmanship and try to figure things out. And Percy is going to be getting himself into those traps. Yeah. He's just always going to be <laughs> leaping before he looks. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think th- that's the difference, right? Is that him seeing these turnstiles, he's grown up only as a human, right? With his human side, you just go through them. Whereas Annabeth, who has grown up only in the godly world, is seeing like, maybe we should stop and think before we take a step. Agreed. You know? And so... It is kind of funny because he's standing there because at first she's panicking, telling him that it's celestial bronze, which will kill him. And then she's like really just thinking and admiring it and feeling it and like, just like, hmm, I'm going to figure this out. And he's like, what am I doing? Why am I standing here? (laughs) She's like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. And she's like, Annabeth. (laughs) She's like, just go through it. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Um, I love that it's a test right out the gate, literally. Um, But I'm (laughs) chah. And also, they're walking through the park, which is creepy as fuck. And she's like, have you ever seen anything like this? And I love how Percy skirts over that question. Because he probably would be, yeah, I've seen an amusement park before, but she hasn't. She Mm. really hasn't been in the real world. So I like, I don't know if it was a choice or like they just decided not to answer it. But I took that as him 
trying not to seem like she's been like excluded from things. Yeah. I kind of like that line. And I like how they put together that Ares and Aphrodite met at Ephesus's park, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is so stupid. Like, the why would they do that? Tunnel. Oh, love. Ugh. Why would they do that in his own park? Disgusting. I think they did it on purpose. They said, let's rub it in his face. Probably. Probably. They're so rude. Shall we get to the tunnel of love? Say it right. Thrill ride. Oh, love. I don't think that's what it was in the book, was it? No, I don't think so either. Okay. But that's like, what it's here. And it it's a neon. Say, right. <laughs> oh, I like that it's oh, love. Yeah, yeah. I liked it too. I liked the design. I'm going to say I loved this more than the book. Mm-hmm. Because in the book, they got rid of Grover really quick because the shoes went, blah, 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 and he mm-hmm. went away. And it was like kind of like just in like a empty pool like situation. Empty basin, yeah. Um, the only difference between the book and this one that I think is of note is that Hephaestus set this as a trap for Ares and Aphrodite because in the middle of this pool in like a boat was his shield and Aphrodite's scarf. And there was cameras. Spiders are involved. That's where mm-hmm. we find out that children of Athena are scared of spiders. Um, and he's streaming this to Olympus. That, Reality TV. Yeah, that doesn't happen here which I think is interesting for them to cut out, but I like what we got instead. <laughs> yeah, because this led to a lot more character growth. It led to a bonding moment between Annabeth and Percy, and it introduced us to Hephaestus. To Hephaestus. So um, they're in the boat going into the th- tunnel of love. I'm not going to call it the other one because I keep forgetting what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> tunnel O love. I don't know. <laughs> um, and what is love? Please. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Did you notice that in the silhouette character, one of them was yes, doing this? I absolutely did. Night at the Rocks, Night at the Roxbury, <laughs> baby. <laughs> bam, bam. Mm-hmm. And what a way for us to be aged by a 12-year-old. It is insane. I, <laughs> this was a hit. He said, I've heard this before. Maybe in an orthodontics office. <gasps> they play old music. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the lightest of hits. He was born in like t- 2009. I don't know. No. I don't understand how people are born in the 2000s. Yeah. I have two brothers that were born in the 2000s. Yes, my brother-in-laws <laughs> are oh, born yeah. in the 2000s. <laughs> you know them. I know them. <laughs> yeah, I've met them. <laughs> oh, we were aged. It was like a knife to the heart. But I loved... This way of doing exposition, right? Of showing Hephaestus' story mm-hmm. between his mother and his love and Ares and everything. It was really smart. And then we got more conversation of like, Percy at the beginning of the episode was like, oh, my dad helped me. Like, maybe things aren't as bad. And then he questions his mother in this moment too. He's like, this is what she was stopping me. From. This is like what she was trying to warn me about, right? Mm-hmm. She was telling me about the stuff. She should have prepared me better. Yeah. And I love that Annabeth's response is, I think she was preparing you so that way you're not like this. Exactly. <gasps> preparing you with love and kindness. That's me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Sally Jackson. <laughs> Hello, it's me, <laughs> SJ. We still have to get the Poseidon and Sally backstory that we're, mm. we're going to show. Um, they're going to show, not us. <laughs> we're going to act it out. Because mm. we know that from, from the press that we did that they said that there's scenes without Percy's point of view and the Grover and Aries was one of them and Sally and um, Poseidon is one of them. So I'm very excited to see that. I wonder if that's going to happen when he actually meets Poseidon and Poseidon's like, I met your mother. And then it's a flashback. Exactly. Yeah. Water, water. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so the tunnel of love turns into the tunnel of hell uh-huh. and starts going. Wee, 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 wee. Oh, heck yeah. There's yeah. a drop. Yeah. <laughs> That goes into like, they could have died. Yeah, they were going to die. Um, set design here. Just want to like point out for two seconds. Phenomenal. Mm-hmm. So good. I love the lighting in here. I love the lighting of the neon when they went in. I love that like when they find where the shield is, it's like, I, I don't know. It was like mixed with carnival and old. Fantastic. Yeah. These, they are putting these kids through the ringer. For this series, I remember when we saw the behind the scenes clip of when they were filming the car chase with Mm -hmm. the Minotaur, those kids were really in a car spinning around. So I have to wonder what Walker and Leah had to go through for this scene in a boat, in a boat being wet, probably being dropped a bit. The this scene like coming up 
And they acted their asses off oh. for yeah. being as young <laughs> as they are. I didn't want to interrupt that. <laughs> um, and they had to have been wet for hours. Disgusting. Especially Percy. Began the episode wet, ends the episode wet. And, <laughs> you know, you have to wonder, it's like you're wet, but then you're probably surrounded by tons of lighting. Mm-hmm. So you're like hot and wet. It's somebody's job to just keep spraying him. Spritzing yeah. you. But you're not like you're not you don't need refreshing. Well, I know. You're that soggy. They, what do they do? Sometimes they they like fake it without them actually being wet is like what they use, like some type of solution and stuff. Oh, I mean, I do remember seeing like them spraying him. So obviously there's droplets, but mm-hmm. like. You know, sometimes they'll use like Vaseline and that way it looks kind of like wet. Yeah. He looked wet. (laughs) Like (laughs) he actually looked like he was soaking wet. Something else that I noticed is that his eyes were very red. Mm -hmm. I think underwater acting. (laughs) Like he opened his eyes probably in the pool and his eyes got irritated. They're like, damn it, Percy or Walker. (laughs) You're supposed to be like immune to water. You're supposed to love it. (laughs) So... (laughs) So a choice is being made here, right? We see the machine. How does this machine get turned on? Somebody has to sit in the seat and the shield drops. Mm -hmm. They know, Percy knows of this chair. See, I like that the conversation before, it's like, my mom should have prepared me. Oh, I know what this chair is. She was preparing you. She prepared me. (laughs) Percy. So it was made for Hera, all this stuff. Um, And Hephaestus had to get Hera out. I love this scene. I love everything about it. I love that Annabeth is going to immediately say, I'm going to go into it. And he's like, no, we get Annabeth saying seaweed brain for the first time. She says, this isn't the arch seaweed brain. You're not going to push me aside. (gasps) Oh, I'm sorry to jump out of the scene, but we also got Grover dropping the lightning thief. Oh, yeah, yeah. He did. He did name the book. <gasps> mm-hmm. Oh my God. Okay. Go back into Tunnel Sorry. of <laughs> We're back. We're, We're back. hyped that she said seaweed. Yes. <laughs> but this moment of the two of them standing there talking to each other, trying to convince the other one that they should be the one to sacrifice themselves was really powerful. Mm-hmm. And I really thought they did such a phenomenal job in this scene. I love that he called back why he chose Annabeth in the first place. Mm. He reminded her, he was like, no, it is like this because the reason why you're here is because I know you would sacrifice me if it was to complete the quest. Mm-hmm. Um, which, like, I like it said in this instance and not initially, because initially it was like, how? Yeah. Rude. Initially it was more like, <laughs> who wouldn't, who would turn their back on me and it yeah. would be you. Because he, he then follows, follows it up with, you're better at this than I am. You know that you're better at this than I am, which is really sweet and kind of humbling and he knows that well my story ends with me sitting in a chair (laughs) Mm -hmm. well you know that's the thing about percy is that percy is never trying to be anything other than who he is the best (laughs) or any no like i mean but he's not striving for the glory and all of that stuff he knows exactly who he is he knows that she's smarter and better at these things than him and he's not going to feign any of that kind of machismo i can do anything right he knows exactly who he is and he's okay with that yeah and unfortunately his fatal flaw is sacrificing himself and leaping in front of whoever he cares about without fully thinking through Mm -hmm. the good thing is in this situation it's good that he did right because annabeth would be the one to figure out how to get him out of it yeah i love the conversation of like right before he sits in the chair he's like gonna say something and she's like i'll get your mom from the underworld and he's like, but also like when this is done, could you like swing back? Get and, me. Yeah. And she's like, like, you'd have to ask. Yeah. Uh, and then when he uh, sits down uh, and he's like, I can't get up. And then he just keeps saying, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. It's like, he's just trying to convince himself that he's okay. Woof. It's so sad. Yeah. Like, it was I, really sad. I know he wasn't going to die, but like, we had no idea what was happening because it's so different from the book, which I love that they did this. And like him saying, I'm okay, he's comforting her. Mm-hmm. And he's the one being turned to gold. Ugh. And that last, I'm okay, he looks like he's like, I'm not okay, but I'm saying I'm okay. And he tries to say it one more time mm-hmm. and it gets cut off. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, <laughs> he's a 12 year old. <laughs> yeah. It's so sad. Leah, 
Sava Jeffries killed it. Yeah. This was her. I love that in this episode, each one of them really got their moment to shine. Grover got his moment to shine with Aries. Annabeth gets to shine not only by herself and with Percy, but in front of another god. Mm. The entrance of Hephaestus. I mean, oh my God. I love fantastic. I love the calmness of just having turned someone to solid gold, forever trapped in a chair. And he's like, Can I help you? Do you need to get out? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you here? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> Which is clear that like he said it for Aphrodite and Ares. But like, I don't think he cares who goes into it, right? It's mm-hmm. like this is his playground, and they just happen to go into it. Like he probably could have stopped it at any point. Oh, yeah. And he didn't. Um, I love that, like, even though Percy and Annabeth agreed that, like, okay, you're going to go save my mom and then try to come back here and save me, but keep going. She decides not to. Yeah. Which I think a couple episodes ago, she probably would have mm-hmm. if Percy and Annabeth weren't Percy and Annabeth, right? And this is her growing. This is her finding somebody, a found family, somebody mm-hmm. that she really cares about. And also questioning everything. She's like, oh, there's gears and stuff. Like, why not let me try to figure out how to get him out now? Because the shield's out. So good. So, so good. Then we have the conversation with Hephaestus and um, Annabeth. Oh my God, I couldn't remember her name. And I just said it 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> but I love this conversation. I wrote this in my notes because um, I just want to say it like how I wrote it. Because it's how I felt. I love that Hephaestus is waiting to see if Annabeth would choose Percy over glory and power and personal gain because no one ever chose him, mm. not his mother or his wife. Mm. And I think that he sees after she says, my mother's like this, Ares is like this, all the gods are like this. He's not like that. And I don't want to be like you guys anymore. And I think he's saying, okay, this is a good way to be. Again, it's breaking that cycle. Oh, so good. And that's what he always needed. Yeah. He needed someone to not be a total dirtbag <laughs> and <laughs> that never happened for him. Yeah. And so, I mean, like you said, his wife cheated on him in his building, in the place that he built. He got thrown off of Mount Olympus. Yeah. Like, I, <laughs> and so, and so nobody ever chose him over glory or over what they ultimately wanted. So seeing the selflessness of Annabeth, who is the child of Athena who is wisdom and power Mm -hmm. and in a sense, glory that moves him. Yeah. And she even calls out her mom Mm -hmm. in this, in this scene, which I think is big for her. Right. I don't think that she would invoke their names without really meaning it. And she did. She named multiple gods in Mm -hmm. this thing. Um, I love that in the end he decides to free Percy. Right. And then he's like, you're a good kid. Annabeth, like you, you did good. I'll tell your mom. I'm like, I'll put in a good word for you. Yeah. Oh my God. Timothy Omenson. <gasps> I also, like, I'm just going to say, I don't know who's playing Aphrodite. I don't think they ever said, I don't think she shows up in this, but Aphrodite is cheating on craftsman daddy <laughs> for edge. <laughs> she likes a real bad boy. Apparently <laughs> just she saying. said silver daddy. No, thanks. That beard. Great. Um, and also his little like flute. Oh Yeah. It was very um, Willy Wonka. Yes. Yeah. It was very Wonka in mm-hmm. Wonka Wonka in Wonka Wonka in very Wonka. There you go. Right. That's fine. <laughs> Wonkonian. Yeah. But he he literally does that in the original Willy Wonka. He plays yeah. little thing, and then he's like, take the mother to the squeezing room or whatever <laughs> to the fudge factory. <laughs> <laughs> he does do that. I yeah. love it. I love a good musical mechanical magicness. <gasps> so good. Yeah. Oh my god. But like, what do we think? Like, this is so much development for these two characters in particular. We know Persebeth is a thing, right? It's, it's a thing. Like, if you're on social media, that's kind of not spoiled for you. But it's like, it's a thing. If you listen to our episodes, Rick Riordan talks about how, like, this is a slow burn. Mm-hmm. Like, there is five books of this building to this thing. Well, again, I, they're 12. I'm rereading it. I'm in mm-hmm. book four. I just met Hephaestus for the first time and Persebeth still isn't a thing. (laughs) Well, I, I'm, you know, we all know my memory is terrible with thing with like full plot points of things. But when I remember reading these books, I never even thought Persebeth 
was a thing. Yeah. It's very them. subtle. Like when it actually happens, like, of course, when you finish the book, you're like, oh, okay. Like mm. all those things building up to it. But that's what's so great about it. Right. Because I think even in this, right. It's like, I wouldn't say it's like romantic love. I think like the adolescent feelings of like, oh, a girl's hugging me. And like, this is nice. You know mm. what I mean? I think right now they're doing a really good job of showing this friendship really come together and for them to truly care Mm -hmm. about each other, which you need to do. Yeah. And I think that this episode was really successful for a number of reasons. And one of those reasons is that it balanced a lot and it did it well. Mm -hmm. We had character development, we had action, and we had espionage (laughs) on top of it, you know? And so, and I think that we really had a really good um, serving Mm -hmm. of all of those. And it was enjoyable to watch because the kids really shone in this episode. It, it's insane that like each, each episode, like I feel like we're watching them grow up within these episodes, mm. right? It's like they seem so young in the first episode and the second episode. And now they're, even though they're actually maturing, they just seem older. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I've heard Percy's voice crack or change just a little bit a few times. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I have to say they're, they're a really fantastic cast, but they were a couple of, um, especially when he's talking to Annabeth about why he's going to sacrifice himself. You could really see the acting chops of Walker Scoville. Ugh. He's, he's such a fantastic Percy and he really leads the trio. Well, mm-hmm. I'm excited to see, like, I mean, we haven't gotten season two yet. I'm sure there's going to be one. But like if they keep doing this, like we're going to be with these actors and these characters for a long time. And I'm loving that, like we're getting such big things mm. in the first go around. Very excited to see where we go. Yeah. Uh, OK, so we have to leave the tunnel. Love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's like one of those big things, right? It's like the series as a whole. You always remember the tunnel of love because that's like such a big thing for these characters. I love that they devoted a whole episode. Oh, yeah, it 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 needed it. Yeah, it needed it. So we get Annabeth walking in like a boss with that shield and delivers it to Ares. Ugh, so good. What now, bitch? Yeah. (laughs) You dropped this. Mm. Yeah, And that's right. We're both here. Yeah. You left this at an amusement park just randomly. I got it. (laughs) Get us across the country. So... (laughs) He follows through with his deal, and just like the book, he puts him into Kindness International Animal Transport. I am glad that we didn't really see any animals, right? And I hope we don't. I have a feeling we won't. Like, maybe Grover will be uncomfortable, which Mm -hmm. is upsetting, but I'm glad we didn't see those, like, three. There's only three. Right? Three animals in here. Um, I don't need to see it with the balloon and being sad. Yeah, and who? one of them has, like, a lollipop stuck to them or something. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to see All that All the food's either. mixed up. I don't like it. Yeah. But of course they're in there. Um, and they're going straight to Las Vegas. Uh, Viva Las yeah. Vegas. <laughs> to see Hermes at the Lotus Casino. Hotel, casino. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. I like how they're like, you know, each thing that's happening in the show is just like naturally happening, right? It's not just randomly like, oh, the thing broke down. Oh, we're in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I like how there's a point to this. But before we go... Grover delivers one of the best lines ever. He says, thanks for the emotional abuse and the cheeseburgers. Oh, and the ride. (laughs) It's like, bye. Snaps. These kids have had it. They've had it with these gods. Especially Aries. They're just like, enough. Because even Percy then steps up to him and is like, you want to play? It's going down. This like two foot tall (laughs) blonde kid that doesn't even know how to water bend correctly. Yeah. And the God of War, and he's like, you're going to find out. <laughs> Punk. <laughs> you're such an idiot. I love it. I love it. But like, <laughs> He's ready. Oh, my God. He needs to get his water bending under control before he tries to do anything. I mean, we're just, uh, it's good that it, we're at the place that when he is in a complete panic, he can make some magic happen that like saves them. Annabeth in the water. Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> So we're there. We're at that point. <laughs> it's <That is> true. Yeah. <laughs> and then they get in the thing and Grover's like, I know who sold the bolt. End of episode. Dun, dun, dun. <gasps> oh my God. Next episode. On the next episode of Percy Jackson, uh, the Olympia. We get the Lotus Hotel and Casino. <gasps> I'm so excited. Ooh. It's one of like, it's something that keeps coming up in the books, but it's also like such a fun thing that I feel like they need to redeem from the movie. I'm very excited to see 
the um the people there that are dressed in different decades Mm -hmm. of clothing that'll be really fun to see also we need to keep your ears out for the name Mm d'angelo just saying any Mm d'angelos kids (laughs) a brother and sister perhaps are you there (laughs) i do like though that they're introducing some of the gods that do play a big part in the series early Mm. because it's one of those things where you hear the names a lot in the books and then you don't see them until later on but I like in the show that it's like, we're going to put faces to some of these. But yeah, you get to put a face to a yeah. name. Yeah. Do you think that we're going to get a musical number from Mr. Hermes? A hundred percent. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. You don't think so? Like Hamilton played on Disney Plus during the pandemic. You don't think that they're like. He wrote the music for <laughs> Moana. Yeah, D- Disney likes him for his music. <laughs> I think it's just going to be a thing where he like gives them some money and they're like, thanks. And he's like, you're welcome. No, I can't. I need more. Because like, Maui was a god. When we saw. Well, right. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's all connecting. Because uh-huh. when we first saw him, when he was delivering Medusa's head, he was singing. I'm mm-hmm. like, true. Sing again. Like just one. I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind. Oh, I wouldn't number. mind it. Yeah. But I think you have to pay the upper echelon of the Lynn manuel Miranda fund, you know. Like I could just imagine stipend. they like go into the thing and it's just like a big musical number. And it's like, welcome to the Lotus Casino. And it's like, here you can do rides and you'll never have to leave. And it's like, you know, heavy handed like that. We're going to work on it. Yeah, I didn't sing at all. I'm not going to sing. <laughs> nah. We're workshopping it. No. By the next episode, we're going to have a musical number. <laughs> Bonus episode. Nothing but a musical. Welcome to the Lotus Hotel and Casino. Ugh, I don't think, I, I wouldn't do it. You're going to have to find another co-host for that episode. I can't sing. No way. Mm-mm. Comment below. Do you want to be in our musical about the Lotus Hotel and Casino? <laughs> <laughs> so three episodes left, which is insane. There's so many episodes. <laughs> we still have a couple of states to get to, so oh. they better travel fast. We do. They got to go to Santa Monica because Percy thinks that Poseidon's going to help him. There's a lot. Back to New York and Underworld. Go to Long Island again. We're in the Underworld. We got to get to Krusty. Mm. All right. Well, Oof. exciting things are ahead. The journey continues, folks. I, I feel like it's only going to get more action-y as we go. You know what I mean? Right after the musical number. Right during the Ooh, musical fun. number. fun. It's like the Pirates of Panzan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So until next week. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.